These are excerpts from the last half of chapter 5 of Shinran's masterwork, The True Teaching, Practice, and Realization of the Pure Land Way. Chapter 5 is entitled The True Buddha and Land of the Pure Land Way. Vasu Bandhu's treatise on the Pure Land states, O world honored one, with the mind that is single, I take refuge in the Tathagata of unhindered light, filling the ten quarters and aspire to be born in the land of happiness. Contemplating the features of that world, I see that it transcends the three realms. It is infinite, like space, vast and boundless. Tan Luan's commentary on Va Subandhu's treatise states, concerning, quote, the fulfillment of the adornment of the virtue of purity, the Gaitha states, quote, Contemplating the features of that world, I see that it transcends the three realms. Why is this inconceivable? When foolish beings, possessed of blind passions, attain birth in the pure land, they are not bound by the karmic fetters of the three realms. That is, without severing blind passions, they realize nirvana itself. How can this be conceived? At the beginning, Dharmakara Bodhisattva, in the presence of Lokasvara Raja Buddha, realized insight into non-origination. The stage attained at that time is termed, quote, the seed lineage of sages. While abiding in this, quote, nature, he established the 48 great vows and gave rise to this land through performing practices. Those born in the pure land of happiness have no impure form, no impure mind, and in the end they all acquire the uncreated Dharma body of purity and equality, for the pure nature of the land of happiness has been fulfilled. The pure land of happiness arises from the great compassion Therefore, this great compassion is said to be the root of the pure land. With the primal vow's inconceivable transcendent power, Amida Buddha grasps and brings beings birth in the pure land. Through the transcendent power, they unfailingly produce the mind aspiring for supreme enlightenment. It is indeed wondrous. The Buddha Dharma is inconceivable. The Buddha is able to cause beings to produce the mind aspiring for supreme enlightenment. Truly, this is the utmost of inconceivabilities. The Gaitha states, Contemplating the power of the Buddha's primal vow, I see that no one who encounters it passes by in vain. It quickly brings to fullness and perfection the great treasure ocean of virtues. Gaithas in praise of Amida Buddha state, Since attainment of Buddhahood, ten kalpas have passed. The Buddha's life, indeed, has no measure. Dharma body's wheel of light pervades the Dharma realm, shining on the blind and ignorant of the world. Hence, I bow in homage. The light that is wisdom cannot be measured. Hence, the Buddha is called immeasurable light. All limited beings receive this dawn light. Thus, I pay homage to the true and real light. Infinite is the wheel-like light that brings emancipation. Hence, the Buddha is called boundless light. All touched by it are freed from being and non-being. Thus, I pay homage to the enlightenment of non-discrimination. The cloud of light is unhindered like boundless space. Hence, the Buddha is called unhindered light. It benefits all beings caught in hindrances. Thus, I bow in homage to the one beyond conception. The light of purity is beyond compare. Hence, the Buddha is called unequaled light. Those who encounter it are rid of karmic bonds. Thus, I pay homage 
to the ultimate shelter. The Buddha light, shining in splendor, is supreme. Hence the Buddha is called Lord of Blazing Light. The pitch darkness of the three lower courses receives it and is dispelled. Thus I bow in homage to the Great One worthy of offerings. Bodhi's effulgence in its brilliance transcends all colors. Hence the Buddha is called Light of Purity. Once shown upon, beings are freed from evil's defilements and all gain emancipation. Thus I bow in homage. The light of compassion reaches far, bestowing happiness. Hence the Buddha is called the light of joy. Wherever it shines, joy of Dharma is attained. Thus I pay homage to the great consolation. The Buddha light rends the darkness of ignorance. Hence the Buddha is called light of wisdom. All Buddhas and sages of the three vehicles together offer praise. Thus I pay homage. The Buddha light rends the darkness of ignorance. Hence the Buddha is called light of wisdom. All Buddhas and sages of the three vehicles together offer praise. Thus I pay homage. The light at all times shines everywhere. Hence the Buddha is called uninterrupted light. Because beings hear this light power, their thoughts uninterrupted, they all attain birth. Thus I bow in homage. None excepting Buddhas can fathom this light. Hence the Buddha is called inconceivable light. The Buddhas of the Ten Quarters all extol birth and praise Amida's virtues. Thus I pay homage. The majestic light transcends forms. It cannot be named. Hence the Buddha is called inexpressible light. With this light as cause, Buddhahood was attained. Its resplendence is praised by all Buddhas. Thus I bow in homage. The light in its luminosity surpasses sun and moon. Hence the Buddha is called light that surpasses sun and moon. Even Sakyamuni Buddha's praise is not exhaustive. Thus I pay homage to the unequaled. The great master Nagarjuna Mahasattva manifested form and first corrected distortions of the teaching. He closed off wrong views and opened the right path. He is the eye for all beings of this continent. Reverently accepting the honored one's words, he reached the stage of joy, took refuge in Amida, and was born in the land of happiness. I have been wandering in the three realms since the beginningless past, turning on the wheel of falsity. The karma I commit every moment, every instant, is a step bound to the six courses, so that I stay on the three paths. May the compassionate light protect me and keep me from losing the mind aspiring for enlightenment. I praise the voice of the Buddha's wisdom and virtue. May all beings of the ten quarters having ties with the teaching be brought to hear it. And may those who aspire for birth in the land of happiness, all, everywhere, have their hindrances dispersed as they desire. My merits, whether great or small, I give to all beings so that all be born together. Entrusting to the inconceivable light, I single-heartedly take refuge and pay homage. Those throughout the ten quarters and three times who awaken immeasurable wisdom, all alike accord with oneness and are called perfectly enlightened. In them, the two wisdoms, real and accommodated, are perfectly fulfilled. Their awakening is of equality. Their grasping and guiding beings, according to conditions, is truly immense. My taking refuge in Amida Buddha's pure land is taking refuge in all the Buddha's lands. Single-heartedly I extol 
one Buddha. May it extend to the unhindered ones throughout the ten quarters. To each of the innumerable Buddhas of the ten quarters, with all my heart, I bow in homage. The Master Shan Tao states, Question. Is Amita's pure land a fulfilled land or a transformed land? Answer. It is a fulfilled land, not a transformed land. How is this known? The Mahayana Identity and Essence Sutra states, quote, The land of happiness in the West and Amita Buddha are a fulfilled land and fulfilled Buddha. Further, the Sutra of the Buddha of Immeasurable Life states, quote, In practicing the Bodhisattva path, Bhikshu Dharmakara, before Lokasvara Raja Buddha, established 48 bows, stating in each one, quote, If, when I attain Buddhahood, the sentient beings of the ten quarters say my name, aspiring to be born in my land, even but ten times, and do not attain birth, may I not attain the supreme enlightenment. Question. When you say fulfilled, it is assumed that it is eternal and forever free of arising and perishing. Why, then, is it stated in the Sutra of Avalokiteshvara's prediction of enlightenment, quote, there is a time when Amida Buddha also enters nirvana. How is this passage to be interpreted? Answer. The meaning of entering and not entering nirvana pertains only to the realm of Buddhas. If you urgently feel that you must know, the matter may be clarified through drawing on the Buddha sutras. The chapter, quote, Nirvana is not illusory, of the larger Prajnaparamita sutra states, quote, The Buddha said to Subhuti, Form is illusion. Sensation, perception, will, and consciousness are illusion. Even all-knowing wisdom is illusion. Subhuti said to the Buddha, World honored one, are dharmas of the world illusion? And are super mundane dharmas also illusion? The four bases of mindfulness, four right efforts, four supernatural powers, five faculties, five powers, seven factors for awakening, eightfold noble path, three gates of emancipation, the Buddha's ten powers, four fearlessnesses, four kinds of unhindered wisdom and 18 special qualities, the results of practices of various dharmas and the wise and sages, arhats, pratyeka buddhas, bodhisattvas, and all buddhas, world-honored ones, are all these illusion? The Buddha said to Sabuti, all dharmas are illusion. Among them, there are the illusory dharmas of sravakas. There are the illusory dharma of Pradyaka Buddhas. There are the illusory dharmas of Bodhisattvas. There are the illusory dharmas of Buddhas. There are the illusory dharmas of blind passions. There are the illusory dharmas of karmic causation. For this reason, Subhuti, all dharmas are illusion. The Buddha said further to Subhuti, all dharmas, as long as they have the aspect of arising and perishing, are illusion. Subhuti said, World Honored One, what dharma is not illusion? The Buddha said, The dharma free of arising and perishing is not illusion. Subhuti said, What is that, neither arising nor perishing? The Buddha said, Nirvana, which is not delusive. This dharma is not illusion. World Honored One, you, the Buddha, have yourself taught that all dharmas are characterized by equality and are not created by sravakas, not created by pradyeka buddhas, not created by bodhisattvas, not created by buddhas. Whether or not there is a Buddha, the nature of all dharmas is always emptiness. Emptiness is itself nirvana. How is it that the one dharma of nirvana is not illusion? The Buddha said to Subhuti, It is so, it is so. All dharmas are characterized by equality, 
and are not creations of sravakas, and so forth. Emptiness itself is nirvana. If bodhisattvas who have newly awakened aspiration hear that all dharmas are ultimately empty, and so on, and that even nirvana is an illusion, their hearts will be seized with surprise and fear. For the sake of bodhisattvas who have newly awakened aspiration, I deliberately make a distinction, saying that what arises and perishes is an illusion, while that which neither arises nor perishes is not an illusion. We know clearly from this sacred teaching that Amida is definitely a fulfilled body. Even if he should enter nirvana, there is no contradiction. All wise people should reflect on this. Question. If, as you say, the Buddha and land are fulfilled, they are lofty and excellent fulfilled dharmas, how could it be possible for foolish beings with defiling obstructions to gain entrance there? Answer. If the defiling obstructions of sentient beings are considered, such aspiration is indeed difficult. But when we truly entrust ourselves to the Buddha's vow, it becomes the strong cause bringing all of the five vehicles equally to entrance. Further, Shantao states, Amida's land is the fulfillment of the 48 vows. Each vow gives rise to the dominant excellent cause. Through the cause, the excellent practice is performed. Through practice, the excellent result is attained. Through the result, the excellent fulfillment is accomplished. Through the fulfillment, the land of bliss is established. Through the bliss, compassionate activity is pervasively manifested. Through the compassionate activity, the gate of wisdom is revealed. The compassionate mind is never exhausted. The wisdom is infinite. Through the practice of compassion and wisdom together, the nectar of Dharma spreads everywhere. In this way, the beneficent Dharma reign saves all beings universally. Passages in the other sutras encouraging aspiration for the pure land are numerous. The sages, with hearts in accord, all teach and praise it in the same way. Further, he states, the city of bliss, tranquil and uncreated in the West, is ultimately free and peaceful, far removed from being and non-being. Great compassion imbues the heart so that one sports in the Dharma realm. Transforming oneself into various bodies, one benefits all beings equally without discrimination. Let us return do not abide in this homeland of Maras, since innumerable Kalpas ago we have been transmigrating, passing through all the six courses. Nowhere has there been any pleasure. We hear only the voices of grief and sorrow. After this present lifetime has ended, let us enter the city of Nirvana. Further, he states, The land of bliss is the realm of Nirvana, the uncreated, I fear it is hard to be born there by doing sundry good acts according to our diverse conditions. Hence, the Tathagatas selected the essential dharma, instructing beings to say Amida's name with singleness. Again, singleness. Drawn by the Buddha, we return effortlessly to naturalness. Naturalness is itself the land of Amida. Undefiled by passions, unarisen, it is true reality. Whether going or returning, advancing or halting, we always accord with the Buddha. We realize the body of uncreated Dharma nature. Amida's perfect fruit of enlightenment is termed Supreme Nirvana. Buddha of immeasurable light because it cannot be calculated. Buddha of boundless light, because there is nothing it does not shine upon. Buddha of unhindered light, because with regard to human beings and things, there is nothing that obstructs it. Buddha of incomparable light, because it is beyond all bodhisattva lights. 
Buddha of light that is Lord of blazing light, because the radiance being free and unrestricted is unexcelled. Buddha of the light of purity, because it is manifested from roots of good, free of greed, it rids sentient beings of their defilements of greed. Because it is free of defilements of greed, it is pure. Buddha of the light of joy, because it arises from roots of good, free of anger, and thus can rid sentient beings of anger and rage. Buddha of the light of wisdom, because emerging from the mind of roots of good, free from folly, it rids sentient beings of ignorance. Buddha of uninterrupted light, because the Buddha's eternal light constantly illuminates and benefits beings. Buddha of inconceivable light, because it cannot be fathomed by those of the two vehicles. Buddha of inexpressible light, because those of other vehicles cannot teach it. Buddha of light surpassing sun and moon, because it shines constantly day and night, unlike the two lights of this Saha world. That all have their bodies touched by this light is due to the working of the vow of softness and gentleness in body and mind. Shinran's conclusion in this chapter states, Thus we clearly know from the Tathagata's true teaching and the commentaries of the masters that the pure land of peace is the true fulfilled land. Delusional and defiled sentient beings cannot here see Buddha nature for it is covered over by blind passions. The Nirvana Sutra states, quote, I have taught that bodhisattvas of the 10th stage see a little of Buddha nature. Hence we know that when we reach the Buddha land of happiness, we unfailingly disclose Buddha nature. This is through the directing of virtue by the power of the primal vow. Further, the Nirvana Sutra states, quote, Sentient beings will, in the future, possess a body of purity adorned with virtues and be able to see Buddha nature. The treatise on the awakening of faith states, quote, To realize that even though one expresses it in words, there is no one who can express it, and that in thinking there is no one who can think it, this is called, quote, being in accord with reality. Freedom from thought is called, quote, attaining entrance. Fai Shi explains, attaining entrance means attaining the samadhi of suchness. Further, the state of no thought belongs to the stage of wondrous awakening. Thereby, to realize the mind is to know the aspect of its first arising. Knowing the aspect of the first arising is no thought. It cannot be known even by bodhisattvas of the tenth stage. Such people as ourselves, however, have not yet attained even the ten stages of understanding. Hence, we must rely on asvagosha mahasattva and enter from words into no word, from thought into no thought. Contemplating, quote, fulfilled, I find that the resultant land was fulfilled from the ocean of the Tathagata's vow, hence fulfilled. Through the true cause, the selected primal vow, the true Buddha land, was brought into realization. Concerning the true Buddha, the larger sutra states, quote, Buddha of boundless light, Buddha of unhindered light. Further, quote, Amida is the king among Buddhas, the most revered among lights. The treatise on the pure land states, quote, I take refuge in the Tathagata of unhindered light, filling the ten quarters. Concerning the true land, the larger sutra states, quote, land of immeasurable light and land of all-knowing wisdom. The treatise states, quote, it is infinite, like space, vast and boundless. Concerning birth, the larger sutra states, quote, all receive the body of naturalness or of emptiness, 
the body of boundlessness. The treatise states, quote, the beings of the Tathagata's pure lotus are born transformed from the lotus of pure enlightenment. Further, quote, for they are the same in practicing the Nambutsu and follow no other way. The words, quote, birth that is inconceivable refer to this.